Music is life for me. I used to steal my brother's beats that he's gonna give people. And before they got them, I just wrote my own song to him privately and secretly. And then I just remember popping up on him and I sung my song off of his track. And he was like, oh, so you can write songs and sing. I'm running like the speed of lightning. I'm trying to find my way, way to you. I thought I had it figured out. I remember the first thing that I said in front of the downtown crowd was, music has no color. After my performance, I remember a guy walked up to me, white guy. He talked about how he thought the outdoors was a, a healing refuge for him. And I, being in the inner city, but not having the actual experience with outdoor life. And he was like, man, let's figure out how we can bring black community to outdoors. And we became like brothers from outdoor community music perspective. And Ryan was kind of that feature for a song. And we actually came into a dope song, which was a program of getting people outdoors. But the challenge would be the mentality that some of the people have about the outdoors. Because the main thing that I hear is the outdoors is white people stuff. And it burns me up to hear that. As far as the outdoors in the black community, uh, that is not our strongest suit. <laughs> um, we, and then, you know, when I say we, I can't speak all exclusively for all black people, but majority of black people, when you say, let's go camping, let's go hiking, they're like, really? And there's so many multiple scenarios, because I can go back to what I said previously. We don't feel safe. Ryan passed away and Ryan took his life. So after Ryan's passing, I knew I was gonna continue doing the work because that's what me and Ryan set out to do. At that moment, I felt like he made a statement because he said, he's not here, but I'm still here. I felt like I need you to stay in that space. That's how I reached out to him. Because that space of the outdoor world, it's not built for us in the city. But if you stay in that space and you become a representative, then more people that look like me, look like us, will feel a little bit more comfortable walking into that space as well. <laughs> I used to stay, I used to stay right here when I was a child. And we're doing a documentary on me growing up here. And I got an after school program where I take kids hiking and climbing and caving and do a little music. So I wanted to come back out here and show where I'm from. We have to address that there's a systemic issue in Chattanooga. If we cannot acknowledge there are barriers in the system with people of color, and we can't have that conversation first, Nothing is ever going to change. So growing up in East Lake was actually fun, but you knew that you were in the same area, same neighborhood, same building as the person that they label as a stone cold villain. We just got the natural, nice human being not knowing that they struggle with trauma or PTSD or mental health issues. So that brought out that villain. That space right there is where I learned how to ride my first bike and I fell. And the bike um, bar went into my stomach and I had a round circle imprint on my stomach. My dad let me go. I went down that hill and after that, I didn't fall again. <laughs> the cultural experiences of our children in this city for minorities is non-existent. They are not going to see themselves outside that school building. They're just not. 
All they're going to see is the school building and their neighborhood. So when Clark tries to pull them into nature, there's a hesitation and a fear of, of the unknown. The main thing I feel right now is this seems so small. The placement of the buildings, the way it's set up, when you're in here and you're not exposed to anything outside of this, you feel like this is the whole world. My hope is that another child from here, or a teenager, or an adult, can see this and be inspired to do something bigger than them, which is outside of this environment. Most of my white friends want to figure out how to get more minorities outdoors. You got people like Brenna. What's unique about the outdoors in Chattanooga, you literally are surrounded um, by an environment that facilitates or allows you to whitewater raft, to have some of the best climbing crags and boulders uh, in the country, to, you can mountain bike a hundred miles of trail, single track trail, within an hour of Chattanooga. You can hike for days on end from like downtown Chattanooga all the way up the side of Lookout Mountain, all the way to Cloudland Canyon and camp. Like you can backpack from your front door in Chattanooga but still the majority of people that I see recreating in the outdoors are white people. I don't assume trust and relationship from the beginning. And so not being a Chattanoogan and, and being a white woman in communities of color, and I'm saying like, this is really cool. Come out and like hike in the woods and camp and get paid and be here and be fun and be safe. You know, part of the work that I have to do is just be consistent and be present and be authentic and myself and available and, and patient for that, that to, it comes around, you know, but it's not, it's not easily gotten, nor should it be. You know, I, I, think, I don't know if that makes sense. No, it but, makes perfect sense. You know what? I think you make sense all the time. <laughs> Even though you yeah, don't like feel I, like you do. Like I think <laughs> goes out we of understand my mouth. each other. <laughs> We overstand each other. Yeah, yes, so yes. I think it's still the same thing with me being black with my community as well because I don't expect trust either because I'm in a capacity so many aren't familiar with. So they're like, is he just doing this? Or does he really want to do this? Or can we trust that he really is going to have us safe out here? you got the perception from movies. So to think that we as blacks can be outdoors in a free space and not get harmed, that's a challenge. Growing up as a person of color, we were traumatized in our history in the outdoor world. We were hung, we were beaten in the fields. We drowned trying to escape crossing rivers and things of that nature. So anything equating to the outdoor world, we're like, eh, what will happen to us if we really go out there? Because they know that world. Those of non-color, they were allowed to play in that world. In reality, what Clark is trying to do is trying to bridge that gap between the fear of what happens when we go hiking. Where are we going? Why are you even over that side of town? They don't like us. To let's address what's going on mentally while enjoying the creations that we have here in Chattanooga. I don't let, I don't let the that's white people stuff stop me from getting and getting in front of my people to try to get them outdoors because I'm a living testimony of how it's not just white people's stuff. This was my first experience hiking. Um, outside of that, um, I played in the woods as a child. Um, living in Willow Homes, there was a big wooded area behind the projects. 
Besides my childhood, this was my first time just really being out in nature. I kind of got to have a time where I, uh, I wasn't worried about too much. I, you know, I was kind of carefree. I'm looking at the mushrooms. I'm looking at the beauty in, you know, the flowers that I pass. I wasn't expecting to participate in the outdoor paddle boarding. But once I got out there and I saw everyone doing it, I said, you know, let's go ahead and put those inhibitions aside and take the opportunity. You know, I, I felt comfortable being around people who I felt like supported me. And that made a huge difference in me deciding to take that step to do the paddle boarding. So really connecting with water for me was just a beautiful thing to be able to get in and not be afraid of, you know, drowning or uh, failing at something that I felt like I really wanted to connect with. At that moment, whether it's an hour or 30 minutes, whatever issues that we're facing when it comes to this country, it's a safe haven. He has now officially built a safe haven and peaceful environment for everyone in that space that we can just enjoy life and each other, regardless of race. The outdoors gives me freedom. It gives me more life and it gives me hope. I love it. you to breathe in for seven seconds hold your breath for seven seconds don't breathe out for seven seconds let's go sometimes letting go of everyone and everything feels so 